Hello everyone, my name is Kamil and I'm going to start off the PowerShell session today. And we're going to start from the very basics, that is using the help. And why are we starting from that? Because pretty much all you do with PowerShell are using functions and commandlets. You need to know how to use them. And there's nothing more frustrating than needing to Google everything and you live in the shell. You might spend a very long time looking for answers when they actually are in the shell. Using help is really, I would say, fundamental skill you need to have to be able to be efficient with shell. Therefore, that's where we're starting, from, from the very basic. Uh, the course was really designed for the person like I was three years ago, before I started using the shell. That is with somebody who is an IT pro, but never really code, never really coded before. Therefore, I'll be keeping that in mind. And I believe I will help you to start from being a person who doesn't really work in CLI to start actually feeling more comfortable about that and be able to use as daily driver. We will be focusing on shell. I might at some point at the very latest stage, put some scripts, but that won't be my aim. My aim will be to, for you to be pretty much master shell as much as we can, because the more you can master it, creating scripts from that point is much easier. So let's start. So I would very strongly encourage you to follow me along, because there's nothing I practice and Again, I will emphasize that if you never coded before and you are not very used to using CLI, there is nothing like practice that can actually put you up front. And what we need, we really need PowerShell. And in that case, what I'm using personally is just freshly installed Windows Server 2016 with PowerShell 5. It's built in there. Uh, you can also use Windows 10, really. At this point, it doesn't really matter. But yeah. Uh, either stick to Windows Server 2016, 2019 or Windows 10. It's 2020, you shouldn't be using Windows 7 per se, especially for developing new things. So, PowerShell. How do, you how do I launch it? Well, by default, you might have it on the taskbar. Uh, Microsoft puts it on the start menu. You can launch it from the uh, if you right click on the Windows, it's so called Power Menu, and go Command Prompt. And when you're in Command Prompt, let's say if you're using on Server Call, then you just type in PowerShell. I am in PowerShell. All right. But let's just say I want to open a normal Windows PowerShell session. Let me click on it. And once I'm here, uh, let's see. Let's see what version of PowerShell I, I run. Because I told you I'm going to use Power version, PowerShell version five. So let's try PS version table dollar sign PS version table enter. So we can see this is PS version five point one. This is the latest Windows PowerShell version that was released. Okay then. So help. How do you ask for help? Well, it's as simple as punching in help, followed by get hyphen service. And I will explain that more about later, but keep an, keep an eye, pay attention to that format. Verb hyphen none, because this is kind of very PowerShell we think. It's what kind of makes it very consistent, but I will talk about that a bit later. So let's start. So as we see, I have has some basic information on get service. Uh, I can I have some more information what it does. I have also syntax, and I you see I have that three times. This is due to uh, parameter sets, and again I will talk about this a bit later on when we actually get in, into that. But I have can, I can have brief idea what shell actually does and what I mean what that command does. So I think just by doing that. But by default when you run it. You don't really have all files, all like a full help. You have just very, 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 very bare bones help. And really, best idea, if you know you're going to use that 
certain PC or server is to do update help. Update hyphen help. Press enter and wait. I will pause the video now so you can so you can fast forward to it. Okay, it's finished and it throw an error. Pretty much that red text usually doesn't mean anything good, and so is in that case that means error. And it when you look at it, it looks well. It doesn't look very organized. However, if you actually read a little bit more about that, and we have it here, where it actually says that we need to run it as administrator, because it needs pretty much amend files in the Windows directory. Uh, or C program files somewhere there. Okay then. So let's do that, because we really want to have a full-blown help system. So I'm gonna. Right click on PowerShell and go run administrator. And yes. Okay, we have first session and I'm going to issue now update help. Once again, and let me pause it now. Okay, it's finished and we have way less issues than that. Um, and since I remember, that was always throwing an error. So it's, well, nothing new, say. Anyways, if we issue now help get hyphen service and we can actually add a little parameter called full you can switch parameters like that by pressing tab so let's say if i just have a hyphen and i just press tab it will take me through all possible parameters a nice little feature about shell okay so i want a whole full view of what's available there let's have a look Oh, I mistyped that. Yeah, my fault. Uh, help get service hyphen full. There we go. So this will give you a very comprehensive list of what's actually available. So we got the same details like before, but we have, for example, uh, the description. So actually, we can just read about that description, what's going on here. And we have also description of all parameters, what they do, what variables they need, and etc. I will, you see there's a lot of brackets here and there. I will explain that them to you in the next session because this is kind of art in its own. And I rather focus on that because that's what we save you plenty of time. And how we navigate that? We just simply press spacebar. So when you press spacebar, it will just cycle our whole page. Uh, another another nice thing, well, we don't really need to focus on that one, but also because of what actually the command can uh, take, what 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 will be output. Uh, we can also have some sort of notes if there's something interesting to us, and probably one of the most uh, search for features examples. So ha actually, how do I run this command to get specific results? So I very often just start with that. I know the command I want to use and I just use samples, examples. Uh, so I know what, how to use it. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's leave this one. On the next one we have, I'm just looking. So let's clear that screen. So I'll just punch in clear. So just to avoid your future confusion because I've just punched in help. We have also get hyphen help and somebody at some point used man, which is actually, if you're a Linux guy, you probably are familiar with that comment. So what really happens here, I've used help. Help is an alias to get help, so, which then punches it, uh, sorry, pipes that to more. So let's see the behavior. So when I do help get service. Oh, let's do get help service full. So we have full screen. So then it allows me to nicely scroll it side by uh, page by page. But if I leave it by pressing Q, and let's clear the screen so it will clear to you. If I just do get help and then get service, and remember verb hyphen noun. It's you will get by it will pretty much get in your blood very quickly. Oh, and let's do full. See, it just wheezes through all the content. But if I do get help, get service full, 
pipe. The sign is called pipe. More. I get the same behavior like if I would do help, get service. So they are literally the same. Uh, help is just an alias to get service. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, what else we can use it for? So, for example, I just showed you if I run get service command now, as we read description, it, it allows me to get state of all the services. And we can use that command, I just told you, pipe to more. Actually, I can read them step by step that they are stopped, they are running. But, well, reading about services is one thing, but I am, you know, sysadmin guy. I quite often need to stop and start services. So what about that? Well, help commandlet takes a white card. So we can tell it actually to take me, show me old white cards that have the word service. Yep, I have a asterisk at the front, asterisk the end. So that means pretty much anything that is before or anything that is after. So pretty much any, any commandlet that has a service in the name will Get displayed. So let's see what how much stuff we have about service. Well, quite a few. We can have get service, we have new service, we have restart service, resume service, set service, start and stop. So probably now you can get it even just by looking at them without even uh, reading much, you can probably realize what they do. So let's, I don't know, pick one, help, stop service so yep it sends a stop message to a windows server service so that will be one of the commands we will probably use at some point as but you can see just because i knew how to use help i i was already able to discover commands i didn't need to go and google how to stop a service or how to start a service i was actually able to do it myself and this is at least to me that was really empowering because actually I started thinking I can actually, you know, when you have a, a GUI application, you can just go click around, browse around. And in CLI is, unless you're familiar with it, it's not that obvious. Well, here's one of the most powerful tools that you'll be using daily once you actually start using PowerShell a bit more. Okay. And now as the end of the session, because you probably will be, well, very much interested what else you can do or how much you can discover PowerShell, there's quite a few things. One is that you can tab as I mentioned. So if you punch in a part of the command and then you just finish by tabbing, so let's say I have get hyphen s and press tabbing, it will then allow me to actually uh, it will unroll all the possible available commands to me. So if I press tab, they go forward. If I do to get a shift and tap, you will go backwards. So it's one way of doing that. And I just have some random command. And if I go a parameter and I do tap, the same, you will show me them. But there's even better way. If let's say I have the same sample, get hyphen s, and if I do control space, it will allow me, you see, all available that start with get hyphen s commands and that will allow me to pick any of them and once I have something I'm after let's say get smb share spacebar it's picked so I don't even need to tap for it I don't need to search for it I just know that was something starting with that particular string of text same for parameters boom I have all parameters available add hat very easy, very nice, very quick. Okay, so I think that should be it for now. Uh, using any sort of help commandlets is absolutely safe, so you can browse them. Uh, get commandlets are safe. I think I don't see any broken. Uh, I mean, dangerous get commandlet. And Fireshell have a very nice built-in feature, and especially when you're working with this standard uh, modules and commandlets that are shipped with PowerShell, if they are to change something or damage something, I mean destroy something, you will be warned, are you sure you want to do that? So it's fairly sure, but still, I would strongly recommend you to do any sort of learning and practicing on the 
VM you have just for this purpose. If you somehow manage to damage it, it's just the VM. So you're not gonna take in the whole, you know, PC or server or I don't know, God forbid, it's domain controller the only on the in in the company on its knees. Because well, we had we all had some stories from the IT world. Nevertheless, let's sum up. Uh, what is it? Okay, so what we did today, we learned about the help commandlet. So how to work how to get, how to pretty much ask for help and how to learn how any sort of command that works. We did discover PS version table variable. This is default PowerShell variable and that tells us what version of PowerShell you run. So when you are in doubt that you actually on the version you want, you can call that one and you'll know. For example, Windows Server or Server 2008 R2 comes with PowerShell version two by default. Uh, 2012 comes with version 3, 2012 R2 version 4, and then you have 2016. You can, however, have PowerShell 5 on Windows 7 and 2008 R2, and you can, so you can actually upgrade all of them to version 5, which is a nice feature. Uh, we learned how to update help, and we actually now know why it's important to always have an updated help. Uh, we learned how to discover commands, and also the verb now. But this is not about this is not all about uh, help system so coming up next we're going to actually learn you how to read that help how to what all that bracket means what that string means what uh, how to actually understand what that parameters it is ah because that's one thing now we learn what parameters do now we actually want to learn how to use that parameters and what they say there's also a, uh, this is not a mistake about there's a whole uh, lot of about topics in PowerShell. So we'll show you how to use them and access them. And after that, I will show you some practice exercises so I can actually, you'll be able to discover some commandlets on your own. And I will pick commandlets that actually I've been using very frequently. So sooner or later you will use them. So stay tuned and I see you at the next video.